Help! Help me! Help! What's up guys, Dan here, Cold Cracker Bushcraft. So duct tape, it can be used for other things other than just kidnapping people like you saw at the beginning. Love it or hate it, it is part of the survival world now. People carry this all the time for a ton of different things in a survival realm. Everything from making cordage, to making hats and shoes, to repair, to fire starting. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, fire starting tips with duct tape. Now if you've never heard of starting fire with the duct tape, um, it's, it's actually a really easy process, but people struggle with it because you have to know how to process this down properly in order to get it to burn properly. Once it's burning, it burns long, and it's a great either fire extender or fire starter. So this leads me into the first point. The first point is you can't be closed-minded with this stuff. Many times as a training activity um, at schools, and even if you see online, it might be something you see people do on YouTube, they start this stuff with a ferrocerium rod. So people get sucked in and think the only way to get this going and burning is with a ferro rod, and that is not the truth. The truth of the matter is that an open flame source works perfect on this. So remember, if we were using a ferrocerium rod and we light something, that same material, be it duct tape, birch bark, dried grasses, can also be lit with an open flame source. So a lot of people get sucked into, hey, I gotta just use this ferro rod because that's what I gotta use, it's a survival thing. Okay, well if we have a match or we have a lighter, use that, it's gonna make life with this a lot easier. All right, so the first thing is that choosing the tape that you're gonna carry is important. Gorilla brand duct tape is the best fire starting duct tape going, okay? Compared to the silver tape or the duck brand Gorilla, whatever it's comprised of works the best. So I highly recommend Gorilla brand duct tape for all your fire starting and survival stuff, okay? Now you're gonna see I carry a one inch roll. I think them big rolls, they're just too big and bulky for me to carry around, this isn't bad. And if you don't wanna carry a roll, just wrap the back end of your ferrocerium rod with your duct tape. There's probably four, four feet, five feet on the back of this. Um, it gives you a nice grip back here. Here. Plus you have your repair item and um, your fire starting item just right readily available. Okay, so before we get into some of these processing tips, okay, how this actually works. Now you can by all means hold an open flame on this for a while and it will start to burn, but we can speed that process up, which generally if we wanna get a fire going, we wanna get everything in our favor that we can. So how this works best is if you take this piece of tape and you just rip it, okay, like this, all right? What you're gonna notice here here are these fibers that are exposed here on the ripped edges, okay? Now duct tape is, a, is woven with all these different fibers, not only this way, but also this way. That's what makes it rip really easily. And then what's exposed are these cross fibers. Now that's extremely important to understand that because it is the same as when we create a fire down underground. We have a heat source, the smaller the material, the quicker it lights, and then we gradually get it bigger. So think of that on a micro scale. All of those little fine fibers all right, that are also covered in the sticky epoxy or whatever you would call it, okay? They're gonna light a lot quicker than if you have just a big glob of tape. So by ripping the tape, you're exposing a lot more of those fibers, speeding up the process of lighting those, and then gradually growing into lighting more of the tape. So with that said, you're probably thinking, okay, I'm just gonna rip the tape and I'm good. So that's a great start, right? We're gonna rip the tape. Now, as I showed you before, I took a piece of tape and I just ripped it down the middle. It some fibers. But if you're gonna light this with something like a ferro rod, these fibers just aren't enough. We need to create a lot of fibers. So what you need to do is you need to stand here and you need to slowly rip sections. So I just ripped one down and I'm gonna grab the next piece and I'm gonna rip that and I'm gonna go to the next piece and I'm gonna rip that. All right, and what that's doing is that's exposing a lot more of these fibers. Both sides of all of these tears have fibers exposed. We don't wanna crush this down. We just wanna let it dangle or we wanna throw it lightly on a pile to use these. But that is literally where the problem comes into play. People have a very, very, very hard time tearing the tape down like that. And on top of a very hard time doing that, it is very time consuming. So I'm gonna just show you these real quick things to get this job done and make it easier and then you go on with your duct tape fires and you'll be good. Okay, so hot tip number one is that you get your roll of duct tape, all right, 
and you don't rip any pieces. You just get the tail end, okay? And you get started the same as if you were gonna rip one of them real thin pieces. So you're gonna come close to the edge. You gotta use your fingernail for this, all right? And you're gonna start to pull, all right? Just like this, so really nice and easy. So it's all connected to the roll now. Now what you can do is take this edge and you can just keep pulling it. And what that does is it just keeps ripping off the edge and you have these nice, really, really long strands of duct tape with the exposed fibers on the edge and then you can work in and go a little bit further. So now the only downfall with this technique, okay? It's fast, it's easy, it's efficient, almost everybody can do it. What happens is if you keep doing this in the training type setting, okay? You take all the tape off one side, you take all the tape off the other and sooner or later you just can't get any more tape off because it gets harder and harder for some reason as you work yourself in so the tape sort of becomes useless and you're wasting a lot of tape but at the end of the day I mean it does get the job done and it's really easy all right now if that's not the route you're gonna go for any reason or let's just say that you have your duct tape folded a different way or it's on the end of the ferro rod what you can do then is you're gonna take your duct tape and you're gonna tear it into smaller strips. Longer strips are a little bit more difficult to use in my opinion and from seeing students do it, definitely more difficult. So ripping it into smaller strips is gonna be a huge help. Now, you noticed in the last segment I said you gotta use your fingernail to get in there. Some people are nail biters, they don't have fingernails that they can grab on there. And some people just have a very hard time pinching their fingers that tight between their nails and giving it a pull. So how do we fix that? Da -da -da. Use a pair of pliers. So needling those pliers work really great for this. You can grab an edge and pull, and that works really nice. And you can just grab the next edge, squeeze it nice and tight, and pull. So needling those pliers, huge benefit when processing this stuff down to expose all those fibers. And then the last thing, if these things aren't available, we can use this thing. So just lay your piece of tape down somewhere on a stump or a log or something like that, and then simply just make cuts on the edge, okay? These cuts are gonna be great starting points for you to grab a hold of and actually pull the tape. So if I do this, I can then grab the tape on one of my cuts, rip it down, exposing all these fibers that we need and creating a nice bundle of duct tape. And then last but not least, how much duct tape do you actually need? Well, that is very difficult to answer because it's gonna depend on your situation. If you have other fire starting elements that you're just mixing this in with, definitely not as much. If you're only using this, you're definitely gonna need a lot more. So a good rule of thumb, if I had to say something, I would say something that fits like in the palm of your hand that is maybe a little bit bigger than a golf ball is probably gonna be enough. I mean, this stuff does burn really long and it um, holds once it gets a flame it doesn't really go out too easily because it's like burning plastic and craziness so uh, what you want to do I'm ripping some of this up now you don't want to smash this down we want all them fibers exposed so if you take this and we take the stuff we were using a little bit earlier okay like this is a good amount any fire starting that you're gonna to need to do. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna crush this down so tight that you crush all them fibers, right? We want some of them exposed, the same as a fire lay. We don't wanna compact it so much that it can't breathe, but then we don't want this also so airy. We don't want this to be this size um, with the same amount of material because once something starts burning, it needs more fuel next to it to burn. So again, I'm just taking it. It's just something nice and loose like this. And then we're gonna light this up with a lighter. I'm gonna show you how nice it burns. So you can see with just a little bit of flame source on there, how nice this stuff lights up, okay? Even a little bit windy here, you're gonna notice that flame's blown all around. That stuff works great if it's processed properly, okay? It didn't take much flame in order to get that going. And now we have ourselves a nice flame source. Sometimes you have to manipulate this a little bit to make sure that you have, um, duct tape on top of itself in order to make, keep it burning. But you can see there, great fire starter, great addition to your kit. All right guys, there you go. The wonders of duct tape, definitely a worthwhile thing to have a little bit of and a definitely a worthwhile fire starter. So give this one a try. If you never did it, you can just go out back and play around with it um, today or tomorrow or whenever and uh, have a good time with it. So give it a shot. So if you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe down below. You can also check us out over coldcrackerbushcraft.com for all our gear, our blog and our classes and all that good stuff. And then uh, get your duct tape, go out in the woods and enjoy yourself. And until the next video, stay in the woods.